guys welcome to Zenomatex this is another video for the series where we're going to do tricky questions with integrals uh, till your exam day so let's get started as usual if you have been seeing my videos before I would request you guys to pause the video after you see the question think about it for a while before you watch the solution so let's get started today's question is a little trickier as well as it requires some rigorous practice in algebra as well. So let's start. So this is the question that we're going to solve. And I want you guys to pause the video right now and wait uh, to, and try to figure this out. And if you're unable to figure this out, of course, you can watch the solution in the later part of the video. So for those of you who have tried, and are successful, I congratulate you guys. And for those of you who have struggled a little bit, let's see what the solution is. We can clearly see that there is a product of two different terms, x squared and 3x, but it's not always wise to jump onto the product rule, the bipods rule straight away. So what we will do, we will spend some time trying to analyze that if either of these two operators would work or not. If the power works, we'll use that. If sine works, we will use that. And if both of them will fail, and that is when we will try to do my parts. So let's try. The first operator that I'm going to check is the power. If we take power as operator, the inner oper the inner function will be x. Now, for the inner function, for this inner function, we will need only differentiation of box present outside the operator. Now, we can see that if we have box as x, we know that the differentiation of box would be 1. And we would want only one outside the operator. To make that possible, we will have to remove this variable term. And we know that we cannot remove variable terms while integrating. Hence, this operator would not be accepted. Let's move on to the second operator that is available, and that is sine. For sine, the inner function would be 3x. If I take sine as operator, 3x is my inner function, and I would want only differentiation of box to be present outside my operator. So 3x is the box, differentiation of box would be 3. So we're not allowed to integrate for the operator sine unless only differentiation of box is present over here. I can introduce 3 over here, but you guys can see I cannot get rid of x squared, and since I cannot make only differentiation of box present outside the operator, this operator will also be rejected. Now, once we have rejected both the operators, we do not have any operator available to integrate. This is when we take the decision that we have to use integration by parts. So let's start by taking the decision that we will take x squared as u, and sine x as v for our integral. Now let's uh, try, we will always need differentiation of u and integral of v. We will need differentiation of u and integral of v for our biparts formula. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate x squared that will become 2x, and I'm going to integrate sine 3x. You have to be, be a bit more careful while you're integrating v, because students tend to slip a lot while doing these calculations. And these are the calculations which are going to create for their errors down the line. So if I take sine as operator, the inner operator is 3x, I would need differentiation of box outside the operator, that is 3 right now. I would place 3 over here, and to balance the equation, I will have to place 1 by 3. Now, once we have differentiation of box present, 
we're going to disappear three things, both integral sines and differentiation of box from here. And we're going to integrate sine 3x. And we know from basic integration that this is negative cos 3x. And this 1 over 3 will come in the denominator. So this is integral of v. Now we're going to apply integration by parts formula. That is u integral of v minus bigger integration signs, square bracket starts, differentiation of u times integral of v. We close the square bracket, you integrate the entire thing back again. So this is the formula that we're using for integration by parts. It's a product rule. So u was x squared. I'm just going to place values for the first step. So we're not going to do much simplification in the first step. So we're going to place x squared. Negative cos 3x over 3 was integral of v minus integral of square bracket star. Differentiation of u was 2x. We're going to take that value from there. Multiply by integral of v will come twice. As you can see, integral of v is needed twice, once over here and once inside these square brackets. Negative cos 3x divided by 3. Square bracket close and you integrate the whole thing. Now let's try to solve the rest of it. Negative x squared cos 3x upon 3 minus uh, now what i'm going to do over in this step this is going to be a bit tricky to see what i'm going to do is i'm going to take out all the constants from this integral sign and bring them right in the front so if i calculate the total constant that is present is negative 2 upon 3 that is the total constant in this in this square bracket we're going to bring this forward so this will become positive 2 by 3 and inside the integral, we are left with x cos 3x. This is what we have left now to be integrated. Now, our next job is to integrate this term that is over here. As we can see, this is again a product. And this over here, if you try to test both uh, the operators once again, both operators are being rejected. This is again product rule. This is again integration by parts. What you can do is you can start integrating right over here or you can mark it as W1 and we can take this working at a separate place and try to solve it there. We'll bring the solution back over here. So what we're going to solve is integral of x cos 3x. And this is again a product rule. This is again going to be by parts. So this is u, this is v. And we're going to need differentiation of u and integration of v. This All right, so differentiation of u is going to be so x is u, the differentiation of u is going to be 1. And if you take integral of v, this is cos 3x dx. We're going to take cos as operator. The inner function is going to be 3. You're not allowed to integrate this cos until 3 is present over here. I'm going to introduce 3 over here and 1 over 3 outside. Once the condition is met, we're going to disappear three things. 1, 2, and 3 things are going to disappear over here and we're going to integrate cos and we know from basic integration that integral of cos is sine. So this will be integrated to sine 3x over 3. Now once again we will have formula for integration u integral of v minus bigger integration sine square bracket star differentiation of u and integral of v again. This is the same formula that we used over there. Now let's place values. So it's going to become x times integral of v that is around, that is sine 3x over 3. Why this? Square bracket start and 
differentiation of u is 1 and integral of v is sine 3x over 3 back again. So now once again, we are going to take constant out of this bracket. So but first of all, let's write this term first. So this is x sine 3x over 3 minus 1 by 3 is a constant in this square bracket. I'm going to take that common out, integral of sine 3x. This is the last integ integral that is left in this term now. Now you can see that this is sine 3x, and we have integrated this sine 3x right in the beginning. It has come back again. We know that the integral of sine 3x was negative cos 3x over 3. So this is negative cos 3x over 3. I'm going to place x sine 3x over 3 minus 1 by 3 times it will become negative cos 3x over 3. This is the solution for this term over here. And once we place it over there, this will give us the final result, negative x squared cos 3x over 3 plus 2 by 3 times this whole thing, that is x sine 3x over 3 minus 1 by 3 times negative cos 3x over 3. As you can see, we have solved all the integrals over here. This is the final answer. And if you have to put limits now, this is the time where you will introduce limits, upper limit and lower limit, to find a definite integral. Now, I understand this is a very lengthy question. And of course, it carries a lot of marks. In A-levels, generally, it carries, this sort of working would carry seven to eight marks. Uh, on average and it will take you like good uh, 10 to 15 minutes to do this and for this the important part is that you are really fluent with the working and you are really accustomed to doing this over and over again if you are sitting in an a-level exam and you're not fluent with this sort of working you might be at a huge disadvantage so if you like this video please share with your friends and if you have any suggestions any questions you can write us in the comment box and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.